Hi, I'm Amanda Malstead, and I will be um, teaching you guys a little bit about my project, which was all about wildfires and their effect on the atmosphere. And then we will end with a little bit of a demo. Um, so wildfires and the effects on the atmosphere. Um, so for being a really simple concept, right, wildfires only need three things. They need a resource to burn, um, conditions that promote combustion, and an ignition source. But they're a really complex topic, and it's growing in popularity because they seem to be becoming more common, and the fire season is longer, and they're causing a lot more damage than we're used to. Um, so really what I was looking at was, well, why is that? Um, why And why are they so hard to predict if we know they're happening? And then what are the implications of all of this? What is going to be the impact on us as humans and just like our environment in general? So the science behind this, right? Like I said, wildfires only need those three things um, to get started, right? A resource to burn, conditions that promote combustion, and an ignition source. So from all of my resource or resource research, um, between these three things, um, the resource to burn, um, because of climate change, because of longer summer seasons, um, our fire season is becoming a lot longer. So not only is there just the stuff to burn, but it's becoming easier to burn, right? Those conditions are helping to promote the combustion. Um, there's, like I said, it's a lot warmer. It's a lot drier. When it's drier, it gets even harder for us to um, get that moisture back in. And then if there is a fire, our fire is also drying out the air, right? Um, and creating just kind of this snowball effect of it's already dry, we're getting a fire, it's becoming drier, and it's becoming harder to um, combat. And then finally, the third piece of this is our ignition source. So um, while a lightning strike is a way that a wildfire could be started, a lot of them are just started from humans. They're started from um, forgotten campfires or, um, you know, maybe intentionally set or a cigarette butt that gets put out somewhere. Um, all these little things all add up in helping to create these perfect conditions for these wildfires. So how does weather impact fires? So there are several meteorolo meteorological factors that can influence the likelihood or exacerbate an already burning wildfire. Um, like I was saying previously, there's a couple big things. Drought or dry conditions are helping to fuel more forest fires or fuel, fuel more wildfires. High winds and then climate change um, in the long run is we're starting to see a lot more fires. Um, with the drought and dry conditions, we're getting that, that fuel that those fires need um, are becoming a lot drier. They're become, and not only drier, but if they're just everywhere, right? Um, high winds help once the fire is started, right? It carries um, or it helps fuel the fire more, right? And then it just helps carry those those sparks, that smoke, all those other things further away from the original source of where the fire started. And then if we're looking long term, climate change is really starting to impact our wildfire seasons. Our wildfire seasons are already growing. Um, they start a lot earlier and a lot later. And this is because overall, we're starting to notice those warmer climate conditions. And those warmer climate conditions help fuel that drought in dry conditions that are needed for our fire source. Um, and they're just keeping the fires burning longer as well. Um, so when we have those hot dry conditions and we add in fire with also helps pull um, moisture out of the air, you are helping to fuel those for a lot longer than we were seeing in the past. Um, but how do fires impact weather? Well, there are several things that fires produce that can in turn influence the weather in the immediate area and as well as far away. Um, so not only does climate change fuel fires, fires help fuel climate change. Um, so when we are seeing these large fire 
conditions are these large wildfires, they are producing high amounts of greenhouse gases in small particles that are um, that we are starting to see not only just in our immediate atmosphere, but further up. And when they're further up, they're really easy to carry away. So we're starting to see those showing up hundreds of miles away from a wildfire area. Um, they're also um, producing poor air quality and visibility. And they just reduce the air moisture. Like I was saying before, it's low air moisture is causing um, us to have a lot more things to burn or that fuel we need. And once the fire starts, it's starting to pull even more moisture out of the air, reducing it even further. So how are effects of wildfires measured or tracked? So it's still fairly new how we are trying to track or measure the effects of wildfires. Now down on the ground, it's a lot easier because we can see them happening. Um, so tracking current fires, past fires to search for patterns or trends. Um, tracking climate and seasons is a way to predict fire season. So we have a better idea of what time of year are we going to see the biggest chance of fires um, just helps in some preparation and preparing. Um, NASA has sent out different um, spacecraft up into the atmosphere to help start collecting air samples, seeing what is being released, how far is it being carried, what sort of effects might these have long term. Um, there's a lot of modeling that is used to see what changes in temp, soil moisture, or other sort of variables could do to a particular area. Um, are they going to help increase chances of wildfires is, you know, extra moisture going to, you know, bring down our chances of wildfires for this wildfire season. And then a lot of places are starting to track those fine particle matters, those things that are getting up into our atmosphere and being carried further away. Um, and they can use that um, to see if there are increases, how far are they coming? So if we see um, one of the studies was done in New York and they were able to they were able to notice that the fine particle matter that they were measuring up in their atmosphere was spiking, and they were actually able to tie that to a wildfire that was happening in Canada. And they were able to start tracking, okay, where is it going to go next, or who could see these particles next, and how can they prepare for that? Obviously, wildfires have a huge societal impact. Um, on top of just the relocation of people if they lose their homes and communities and just that sense of loss, increased fine particle matter is being carried far and wide. Like I said on the last slide, they're seeing effects of wildfires in Canada. They're noticing these fine air particles down in New York, and that's causing, um, you know, breathing issues or health issues for the people there, even though they're hundreds of miles away. Um from our lit wildfires, we are increasing greenhouse gases, um, which in turn can help it or can help but can help exacerbate that climate change um, piece as well. There's increased risk of more fires or longer fire seasons because of this climate change as well. So we're already noticing weeks or months longer fire seasons because of all the changes that we are noticing in our environment. There's a huge range of health conditions. Um, you know, if you have asthma, if you're elderly, if you're young, um, especially, um, also just the mental health aspect of it. Um, they're starting to see that there's more mental health issues with people who have experienced wildfires and then just increased mercury in the air, which comes with its own slew of issues, um, as well. So, how can we teach our students about wildfires? So the following several slides are gonna highlight an example lesson that can be used when teaching students about wildfires in, con in conjunction with climate change. Um, so I would use this with my sixth graders. Um, our curriculum actually has a whole wildfire um, project that is tied to our atmosphere and looking at how the effects of fire can affect um, the four spheres. I could also tie this in with our climate change unit that's coming up, depending on my students. Um, this particular lesson was influenced from SW Hub's production library, which um, I can provide a link for um, and so I pulled from them. It was for ninth to 12th graders. So I adjusted it a little bit and just put a little bit 
more of a my spin on it. Um, they have a really great like five day curriculum that goes along with this if you are teaching older children. So what phenomena are we looking at? So students are going to be looking at wildfire risk, severity, and size, um, and just how they're affected by temperature, but also natural parts of our ecosystem, how different ecosystems are set up, plants, conditions, all that good stuff. Um, if we're looking at it through an NGSS lens, um, some of those SEPs that you could tie to this would be planning and carrying out investigations. Students will be making some models. Um, and then just constructing explanations. Why is this happening? Or why do we think this is happening? And then if we're looking at those cross-cutting concepts, we can tie in some patterns, our cause and effect. Um, so materials that you would need, um, student handouts, which you'll see part of it later in the slides, experiment materials per group, plus some for the teacher would include um, pie pans, sand, wooden skewers, which are going to represent our trees, cotton balls, which are going to represent shrubs in our situation, paper shreds, which will equal our grass, um, a spray, um, like a spray bottle for water, a scale, lighter, um, and thermometer. Now, I have some of these stuff here at home. Um, all of this stuff is stuff, though, that I do have in my classroom. Um, for teacher prep, you're going to make two models, which I'll show you an example of a model in a moment. Um, one is going to be at your room temperature. One you are going to put under a heat lamp to show increased temperature or that climate change effect. Um, and then using a pie pan, you're going to add in sand. You're going to add in 15 trees. You're going to pull apart a cotton ball to be about 12, 15 shrubs, and then a spoonful of grass. Now, you would obviously start with a conversation with your students. So I would prompt maybe put up some photos of a wildfire here in Minnesota. We don't see them that often, especially where I teach closer to the cities. Um, so I might need to use some pictures to kind of help get my students engaged. Why do you think forest fires are becoming more common? How do you think climate change might be linked? Well, what do you need to make a fire? How is this linked to climate change? And just start a more organic conversation around wildfires. And when you're ready, um, you are going to hand out lab sheets to students and let them know that today you're designing models. Um, you, being the teacher, are in charge of the two controls, so our room temperature and then our control with climate change. And then each group in your class is going to pick a variable to change um, that's different than the control that you have. And so on the screen, you see an example of what your students would fill out. They are either going to add more or less grass, shrubs, trees, or more or less water. Um, and for their model, using the same materials, and they would also eventually they kind of make a guess, right, or an estimate or a hypothesis. What is the risk or the fire risk for your model? Um, and then you would have, in the end, you would have 10 models total because um, you want to make eight different changes plus your two controls. Um, students are going to record data in a data table that's part of their lab sheet as well as record observations from other models before anything is ever lit on fire. Um, and then what I would do in my own classroom is I would start with my models. I would start with my um, my control model as well as my control climate change model which should hopefully have been cooking under a heat lamp for the last 20, 30, 40 minutes in your classroom, depending on how much time you have. And then you move on to the demo part, right? You move on to the lighting things on fire and having these conversations with your students. And so I actually have um, an example, which I didn't think through completely because we have a just a tiny little dot. But um, as you can see, super simple setup. I have my pie tray um, with all those different things in there, right? I have my shrubs, I have my paper, I have my toothpicks, which you would spray with water. So hopefully you're not um, causing big, huge fires in your classroom. And then, you know, after talking to admin, you would essentially light part of your model on fire. And I'll just kind of do a little bit and I have some water nearby. And so you would, oops, you guys can't see that. Um, you would just slowly start lighting all your different models on fire. And so this was my control um, without climate change. And as you can see, my fire is already slowly burning out because there's not too much stuff going on there. 
So I'm going to set that aside. And then you would go through your other models, right? Maybe having that conversation of, okay, we just did our two controls. Um, which one do you think would cause less fire? Or maybe you want to go the opposite way and maybe you're going to talk about which one would see the biggest fire. And then hopefully you guys would have this really great conversation about the ties between climate change and the ties to wildfires. Um, so that's my presentation. I will try to include links to um, the worksheets that I put here as well as that other um, curriculum because I think it's really great. Um, and hopefully you guys learned a little bit about wildfires and their effects on the atmosphere.